All right. Well, welcome everybody to Discover Ease Introduce the Girl to Engineering Day 2018 planning webinar. Um, a few housekeeping things before we get started. Um, first off, thank you all for joining us today. We are going to be using voice over internet. Um, hopefully, you've all been able to uh, get in and access the teleconference line or through your computer. Um, if you have any questions, let us all know. Also, this webinar is going to be recorded and it'll be posted on the website through YouTube either later today or tomorrow. So if you have colleagues who weren't able to attend or if you are going to have to leave early, you'll be able to find the rest of the webinar online shortly after it's completed. Um, if you do have any questions, please go ahead and type it into the question space on your control panel and we will get to them. We'll also have time for some questions and answers at the end of the webinar. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Gwen Hearn. I'm the Outreach Coordinator for Discover E and the Dream Big Film as well as the Program Manager for our Introduce a Girl to Engineering Day program. So Thank you to all of our role models and potential role models who are on the phone or on the webinar with us today. Um, if you have any questions along the way over the next couple of months or throughout the rest of the year as they pertain to Girl Day, Dream Big, or Discover E in general, uh, please feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to assist you. And at the end of the webinar, I'll have my contact information so you can jot it down from there. On today's webinar, we are going to have two additional presenters with us. Uh, we'll have Samantha Dickey, who is the founder of Dirty Beauty Skin Care, where she formulates plant-based cosmetics using ingredients from a family organic farm. She's created a lip gloss lab that helps girls explore the techniques and creativity used to develop processes and manufacture products. She's also one of our stellar Girl Day role models, so we're excited to have her on the call with us today and we'll be speaking with her a little later down the line. In addition to Samantha, we'll be speaking with Dreamy Patel, who is the lead senior system engineer at Lockheed Martin. Uh, she's an electrical engineer with an MBA from Penn State, and she also achieved third runner-up as Miss America 2017 and was crowned Miss Southeast America 2016. She has created the Dare to Dream platform to inspire the next generation. So we're excited to have both Dreamy and Samantha on the line with us today um, to speak with us and give us a, a Girl Day role model perspective. So to start us off, I would just kind of like to take a short, quick poll to see who has joined us today um, and see whether or not you are already signed up as a Girl Day role model. So if you could take a moment to uh, answer the poll questions on the screen. Just give another couple of seconds. We're nearly there with our attendees having voted. All right. Another few seconds here. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, sharing your answers. It looks like we've got about only 16% of us are already Girl Day role models. And so it looks like we've got a good majority of those of you who are not yet role models, but hopefully after learning a bit about Girl Day, what it is, the resources we have, and how you can impact the next generation of engineers, we'll be able to um, convince you all to join us as role models and really help to increase the amount of girls that we reach through our engineering outreach. So launching into this, 
What is Introduce a Girl Day to Engineering Day? Basically, it's an opportunity to show girls what engineering is all about. It's really as simple as that. This is a program that helps to show girls that engineers make, a, make the world a better place and that there is a space in engineering for them. It's a growing movement to inspire girls' futures by introducing them to engineering and technology, by giving them access to role models like all of you, to show them that engineers are, you know, they're what makes the world a better place and that there are engineers already out there that look like them, but still there's a need and, you know, a space for them to come in and join the program. So what makes Girl Day unique? Basically, it's our volunteers. Girl Day is powered by you, our engineers, educators, engineering students, other STEM professionals who are out there doing outreach with girls and kids in general, engaging them, showing them what engineering is all about. It's really our awesome role models that help to educate and show girls that engineering um, helps to change our world and make it a better place. You know, in just one day, you can make a difference by sharing your knowledge and experience and some fun. You give girls the chance to think like an engineer, and you'll be amazed at what you learn. So that's the purpose of today's webinar. Uh, today, we'll talk a little bit about what it means to be a role model. You'll get some ideas for your, you know, your Girl Day events that are coming up in February, events you can do all year long. You'll be able to hear from some current Girl Day role models like yourselves or um, you know, can give you some ideas of what role models do if you're not already a Girl Day role model. And additionally, we will talk about our resources that we have to help and support you in your Girl Day planning. So what do role models do? In short, you talk to girls. Visit a classroom, talk to your daughters, your granddaughters, your nieces, your neighbors. Uh, go and do outreach at local clubs, work with the Girl Scouts, Boys and Girls Clubs. Our role models also host events. Uh, you know, like I just said, they work with schools and girl-serving organizations to host a small event in a classroom. Or some of our role models even host events at their universities for up to 8,000 people. So it really, you know, there's a large scale of things that you can go out and do. And even just talking to one girl can make a huge impact in their lives. Our role models also host Girls' Night Out programs. This is something we're going to talk a little bit more in depth in a little later in the webinar. But basically, you'll arrange a girls-only screening of the film Dream Big. And uh, if you're not already familiar with the film, we'll talk more about this as well. But it's really a, a film geared at engaging kids in engineering, especially um, we've got some great messaging in there that talks to girls in exciting ways. One of the other things that role models do is invite them to, they invite girls into where you work. You know, you can give girls a chance to tour your lab or facility or invite them into your manufacturing plant. You can tour your work and then have, sit down and have a lunch with your female colleagues so girls will get the chance to ask questions. If you're working in a university or an institution of higher learning. You can invite high school age girls into your university engineering department. They can meet engineering undergrads. There's really a lot to be said for that peer-to-peer -peer or near-peer interaction to get girls engaged and excited and see that moving, taking these steps into engineering is something that is really a, a viable option for them. So. That's just a, a little bit about what our role models do. We'll talk more about resources to help you plan these events and to be successful in them a little later on in the webinar. But I just wanted to share a little bit of feedback we've gotten from our Girl Day programs last year. Uh, from one of our current role, or last year's role models, still current role model, um, they found that making a difference today inspires students to follow their dreams and for them to make a difference in the future. And that's something that one of the pieces of feedback we get year after year from our role day, Girl Day role models is that they see the impacts that are made directly and how that influences girls' decisions moving forward and really helps to advance the field of engineering and diversify it and get new creative minds in. Um, 
One of the other quotes we like to share is, you know, this is a mother who attended an event with her girl la or with her daughter last year. They were talking to a toy manufacturer, and she came away saying, I'll tell you, we'll have a new outlook the next time we're in the toy section at Target. Uh, this is one of those really neat quotes to hear because it really, the engineer and the role model was able to take engineering and break it down for uh, the little girl at the event on a re relatable level. And she was able to actually see how engineering affected something that she was involved in every day of her life. Um, and then, of course, it's always nice to hear from the students directly. It says, thank you for teaching us what it is to be an engineer and for all the things that you have to go through. Now, this is, I think, a really poignant message in that by reaching out and engaging with girls, it shows that you know there may be struggles along the way, but it's really a, a great way to get involved, use your creativity, and to make things you know, come out the way that you want them. So I can come, I can sit here and share quotes with you all day, um, but what better way to hear from, you know, to hear about the experiences is to hear from role models themselves. So we put together a short panel with two of our current role models, uh, Samantha and Dreamy, who we mentioned at the beginning of the webinar. And uh, we'll learn a little bit about their backgrounds first and then launch into a couple questions related to their outreach and the importance of role models. So quickly, we've got Samantha Dickey up here first. If you could just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Samantha, and then we'll uh, introduce Dreamy and then launch into the panel. Sure. <clears throat> Thank you so much for having me on the call. Um, again, my name is Samantha Dickey. And I have a BS in electrical engineering technology. Um, what I do day to day is I formulate and manufacture plant-based cosmetics. Um, the career that I had right out of college was working for Pepsi-Cola in manufacturing and logistics. I'm originally from Pennsylvania, and I now live in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Samantha. And, all right, Dreamy, would you go ahead and say hello, please? Hi, everybody. I want to welcome you to introduce a Girl Day engineering webinar, and I want to thank Gwen for a wonderful introduction. I hope I can live up to your expectations and standards. Mm -hmm. So a little bit about me. I've had privilege and honor to be working with Lockheed Martin for about 13 years. And I worked on some cool uh, space programs from uh, work on the satellite, US missiles, training simulation programs to really help and support our military personnel. Um, in addition to the STEM initiatives, my passion is also into art, painting, pageant, public speaking, and business side of things. So, um, you know, I want to give back uh, and I want to help. Uh, I want to create more role models in our society. So I've created a Dare to Dream platform and I formed a strategic alliance with Lockheed Martin's Generation Beyond program, which I'm going to speak with you guys more about later. Thank you. Great. Thank you both, Samantha and Dreamy. Um, it's really nice to have your voices here as uh, having been involved in the Introduce the Girl to Engineering Day program as our role models. Um, so thank you. And to go ahead and get started, our first question will be for you, Dreamy. Can you just share a little bit about why role models are important? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I truly believe that role models, they act as our guidance, our support system, inspiration, and they really help you understand your goals and your vision. And, you know, then they work with you through some of the challenges and obstacles so you can achieve all your goals and vision. Um, it's really important to learn the characteristics of uh, somebody who's successful and a person that you look up to that has a value and the qualities that you can learn from. It can be your parents, your teacher, your executives, um, an Olympic gold medalist, an engineer, or a friend, <laughs> right? And um, 
So, you know, the most important thing is understanding your vision and your goals and then being able to learn and overcome some of the obstacles and challenge. Um, everybody had some kind of adversity in life. Uh, Michael Jordan, he didn't make his, for, um, his high school varsity basketball team. And Oprah Winfrey was, in fact, fired from a news, uh, news reporter. And, you know, this reminds us that failure is not going to prevent you from being successful in future. And so it's really important to seek out a role model that align with your career. It could be a STEM in engineering, and you know they um, they'll, they'll help you and guide you and uh, help you be the best version of yourself. Yeah, that's really great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I think you bring up a good point that you know it's it's important to show that everybody has challenges and uh, that that's okay. It's you know working through it and overcoming it, and role models are a really great way to um, kind of help, especially kids and girls coming up, to show them that it's all right to to stumble, and you know we can work through it together. Um, so thank you so much. That's that's really valuable. Um, all right, Samantha, our next question is for you. Can you share with us what inspired you to become a Girl Day role model? Absolutely, sure. I was inspired to become a Girl Day role model after being introduced to Discover E's Engineers Week a few years ago on social media. And I was thrilled to learn that there was even such a thing as Engineers Week because I love engineering. And even though I love engineering, I almost missed out on the chance to study engineering technology because I just didn't know about it. And I should have known about it because my father is an engineer. And I knew that um, growing up, but I didn't think much about it. Um, so during middle school, um, and especially high school, I thought I wanted to be a fashion designer because I, I learned how to sew, and I love Vogue magazine and clothes and makeup. And I thought it was the sewing that I liked, but I later found out that it was the process of knowing how an article of clothing comes to existence. So the actual decision to study engineering technology came during registration when I was signing up for college classes and my parents were with me in the college gym and the registrar asked me what classes I wanted to take and what did I want to major in. And honestly, I really had no idea. I did not know, you know, have any clue of what I wanted to do after the whole fashion designer thing, um, you know, turned not to work out. And so my dad said to me, he said, Samantha, you can try engineering. They always need female engineers. So I gave it a go. I signed up to major in electrical engineering technology at South Carolina State University, and I never looked back. I gave engineering a go because someone I know and trust made a suggestion. And I'm inspired to be a Girl Day role model so I can make a suggestion. So I can make a suggestion to all young people, and especially girls, so we can have more of a mix of diversity and engineering. A suggestion to a young person that has no idea what that nagging in their head is. To suggest that their gift and their purpose and their skill may actually be invisible. To suggest that their path, their career, is the process of thought. To suggest engineering and to bring forth the potential for more solutions, for more cures, for more products, for more services, for more technology, more space travel, agriculture, manufacturing, for everything resource-driven that improves quality of life. So now I feel that it is my turn to make a suggestion, and that is what inspired me to become a Girl Day role model. Wow, that's such a cool story. Thank you for sharing that. You know, it's it's really neat to hear that, you know, something as uh, <clears throat> kind of simple as somebody asking you, what do you want to do? What do you want to major in? That gives you the opportunity to, to think, and it sounds like it sparked an interest in you that you maybe didn't know was there. Um, Definitely. So I think, yeah, that's that's really a, an important message to, to carry with you as you're a role model, that just by kind of mentioning something or giving somebody an opportunity to experience something that might spark uh, a new inspiration for them. So thank you. That's, that's really great. Thank you. 
All right, so Dreamy, now back to you. Can you share with us a time you knew you made an impact in your outreach to girls? Yeah, absolutely. So that's a great question. Um, so I'm using Lockheed Martin's Generation Beyond program. We have cool workshops, training modules, and this um, um, Mission to Mars um, uh, school buses. And you know, I've had an opportunity to visit various schools, high schools, colleges, and really interact one-on-one -on -one with uh, students and understand, you know, what their aspirations are. Um, you know, that they wanted, they could. They have aspirations of pursuing a STEM field. It could be in engineering or computer science and whatnot. And um, so I met uh, one of the girls. She was very charismatic, very sharp, outspoken, you know, passionate, and driven. And uh, I realized that she dropped out of school. And I found out later that unfortunately she had a setback. You know, her parents had passed away, and as a result, it was affecting her. So I wanted to make myself available to her, you know, I wanted to be there to support her psychologically at the same time in her career, make sure that she doesn't um, have any setbacks in the career because of the incident. And so I was, because I was ahead in my career, I wanted to be there to guide her. And um, I, we enrolled her back in school, and then I helped her with some of her coursework. Um, so that way she was able to come back to speed and she actually graduated with computer science which was great and uh, we actually got her um, internship with Lockheed Martins you know so now she herself is a role model and she's going out there and she's making an impact for others and you know making uh, recruiting girls in a STEM field so it was just such a you know it was um, really inspiring for me to see that I was able to really be there and test someone's life when they were going through a hardship and, you know, make them where they are today. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's really great. It's, it's, you know, sometimes it just takes a little extra effort on your part as a role model and in investing yourself um, to, to help somebody see that, that they can proceed and keep going. So that's really great. Thank you for sharing. And it's, it's awesome to hear that she's now kind of paying it forward and, and acting as a role model herself. Um, which is great. Those are the stories we, we love to hear and kind of evidence that, that this outreach really does work. Um, all right. And uh, our last question for the panel, uh, Samantha, back to you. How does your own story impact your outreach? Um, sure. Um, so my own story definitely does impact my, my outreach. Um, my own story says that an engineering candidate may not know engineering is their gift. And this is uh, true for girls also. So I know that they may be expressing themselves in ways that materialize as cooking or sewing or, or, or athletics or anything. And uh, some of these ways are what we call unconventional. So my outreach efforts show engineering in ways that are, that are unconventional. So when I was a middle school student, it would have benefited me to know that, that my particular interest in sewing and cooking and shop and athletics are actually tied to my engineering abilities. Maybe um, by having, maybe by pointing out that there was a reason why my success in my gymnastics classes increased when my understanding of the mechanics of gymnastics increased, that would have been beneficial for me to know. So I can say with confidence that when someone says, cosmetics or they say any kind of brand of soda that they like, the first thing that they do not think of is engineering. But cosmetic chemistry and manufacturing engineering and industrial engineering are all tied to both makeup and you know, beverages. So I use these unconventional expressions of engineering to reach what young people like and find interesting. And, and I also like them and find them interesting too. So it's no secret that uh, beauty and fashion and makeup and selfies and Snapchat are even more popular these days as social media uh, to, uh, takes prevalence. So working in the cosmetics manufacturing field, it gives me um, a, a really unique opportunity to be relevant to what young people and mainstream society is drawn to. So what we do is we do things in our beauty lab, like we label all of our materials with formal scientific names and chemical formulas, 
And we have process posters on the wall that list scientific vocabulary and facts about color theory and nutrition data about plant material. We do this so that when girl guests come into our lab, they see makeup that is popular, and then they also see information that is familiar. So most of the time, people say, you know, I just studied about antioxidants or minerals in one of my STEM classes. And this allows them to see the technical math and science world as part of popular culture. So this makes my choose engineering suggestion easier and more exciting. So part of my story, too, is I also go to our um, local school and volunteer in their STEM initiatives. Because I used to work for Pepsi-Cola in manufacturing operations, I used to go to classrooms and I called myself Mrs. Soda Maker. And we would make mock soda and we talked about carbon dioxide and water and the water cycle and fructose and agriculture and more. And students loved seeing how soda was made. So again, it's an unconventional approach to introducing engineering. My own story impacts my outreach in ways that are unconventional. We have a lip gloss lab to introduce girls to engineering. And I think that's unconventional. And that would have piqued my interest as a middle and high school student. And I, I hope it piques others' interest as well. That's great. Uh, thank you. It's a nice reminder to kind of think about that everything we do, well, just about everything we do every day has been touched by an engineer in some, some capacity. And uh, it's finding those entry points when working in outreach with, with girls and with students. Um, it's the entry points to get them interested that, oh, my, I never thought about that, that my lip gloss has been engineered in some way, or my soda. Um, so I think that's, that's a, a neat point to bring up, especially for all of our kind of role models and potential role models that are on the webinar today. Um, if, you know, whether you consider yourself an engineer or not, um, there's a way to relate engineering to your students, to the people that you're talking to and the girls that you're doing outreach with. Um, it's just finding those points, whether it's conventional or Samantha, as you, you know, as you kind of were talking about those un unconventional areas, um, there's definitely a way to, to make those connections. So thank you both Samantha and Dreamy for sharing these great points with us and, and sharing a bit about your own stories as well. Um, it's really great to, to have such engaged and involved role models. Um, so thanks for sharing with us. And hopefully your stories give a little inspiration uh, to those of, you know, to the rest that are on the webinar as well. So, all right. So to move along, now that we've had the chance to hear from Dreamy and Samantha, um, I'd just like to take one more quick poll to see who our audience are. Um, we know that some of you are role models already, some are not, but if you could fill out and just give us an idea of who all is on the call, um, that would be appreciated. We have another 10 seconds or so. I think most everybody has, has submitted their votes. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Looks like we've got 38% uh, engineers. About 25 have self-identified as other. Um, we've got a good a good percentage of teachers and other STEM professionals, um, and some undergraduate students on the line as well. So it's great to have such a, a big mix of folks um, kind of attending. So from here, we wanted to talk a little bit about how to get involved with Girl Day. Uh, if you're not already a role model, it's super easy to join. Um, you can visit the Girl Day page through discovere.org, and you can learn more about becoming a Girl Day role model. You can sign up 
find some great resources, tips and trainings, and ultimately you can get inspired, get involved, so that you can get out there and start engaging and inspiring our next generation of engineers. To talk a little bit about some of the great resources we have for you, new this year, we've started a Facebook group for role models. Um, anybody can join. However, if you're not a role model, we will encourage you to sign up as an official role model, but you don't have to be to join this group. This is part of our, our initiative to create a, an interactive community. We've got great role models who have an unlimited amount of resources, ideas, and our, what we were chal or challenged with was how do we connect you all with each other. This is our first step in doing so. Uh, so feel free to join our Facebook group. It's Girl Day Role Models. Um, you can add your colleagues and your friends. This is a space for you to share ideas, post resources and events, ask questions of one another if you're having challenges or thinking of something but you don't know if it's going to work. You can throw it up there on the page and get input from other role models and contributors. And really it's a space where you can get together to inspire one another. One of the other things that we're launching this year is a blog campaign um, of blogs written by our role models. We're going to start rolling them out probably in late November, so later this month, early December. Um, it's an opportunity for some of our current role models to share their experiences and inspiration around the importance of being a role model. And really, uh, you know, just another resource, something for you to use for inspiration or ideas um, to get in get excited and see that there are other role models out there that are doing the same types of outreach as you. Um, you're not alone in what you're doing. We have kind of redesigned our Girl Day webpage. Um, we've got some really excellent new resources. Uh, we've got our Facebook group, which we just mentioned. We have a new program this year, Girls Night Out for Girl Day, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. But we've also got some new planning guides, great tips and trainings for engaging with girls. We've put all of our promotional materials on one page. And then I also wanted just to remind you all that we've got a great events calendar that you can use to share your events. And we'll talk a little bit about each of these a uh, bit more in depth um, with the next few slides. So first off, I wanted to talk a little bit about Dream Big for a moment. Hopefully by now you've at least heard of this film. Um, it's a kind of a first of its kind film for IMAX and Giant Screen Theaters that opened during Engineers Week this past year. Um, it's all about celebrating women in engineering. And we're using Dream Big through the Dream Big Girls Night Out program to engage girls in engineering. Uh, just a quick bit about the film. It was a product of a collaborative effort led by Bechtel Corporation, ASCE, and Discover E. Um, and it was produced by McGillivray Freeman Films. It premiered during Engineers Week of 2017, and it actually hit 1 million views, exceeded 1 million views in its first six months since opening, um, which is really fantastic for a documentary film of this type. But how this relates to you. Our new program, Dream Big Girls Night Out, it's an opportunity to see the film, show it to girls, and then use this as your conversation starter. Uh, you can invite girls in from local schools, Girl Scout groups, Boys and Girls Club, to come in and engage with engineers, working engineers, uh, undergraduate students, doing hands-on activities. You can have a lecture. You can set up a question and answer, host a panel, serve pizza, have snacks, have fun, make a whole event out of it. Um, it is Girls' Night Out, but don't let that name limit you. Uh, if you wanted to do it during school hours or on a weekend, a morning, um, that's fine as well. If your local museum is playing the film, we'd require a request that you work with your local museum. Um, it is playing throughout the country in various cities. However, if the museum near you is not playing the film, we've received special permission from the producers to kind of request your own screening, and so special event screening. So you can work with, with me to uh, find out how to get the film for your Girls Night Out for Girl Day um, event. And again, at the end of the presentation, 
they'll have my email address so you can send me an email. Also, there's more information on the Girl Day webpage um, about this as well. I mentioned we've got three new planning guides for Girl Day. Uh, knowing where to start can be the hardest part. So we have guides for engineers, for educators, and for parents. We've got tips on how to get connected with your community. Um, if you are teachers looking for engineers, we have ideas and tips on how to get in contact with your engineering community, um, how to bring engineers into your classroom. Same for engineers. We've got ideas on how to get connected with uh, the local schools or where you can find, you know, other types of girl serving groups working with Girl Scouts, uh, Boys and Girls Club, the National Girls Collaborative Project, and we have a number of other um, great ideas and partners that you can, you know, kind of re start to reach out to. And then we've also got some great resources for parents. A lot of feedback we've gotten is, my daughter attended this great event, now what? So we've got ideas for how you can keep that conversation started, or keep the conversation going, and um, some resources you can use to keep engaging your students and your girls after they've, you know, attended this awesome event, so that they don't lose their interest. We also have a number of great trainings um, and slide shares that are free for everybody to come and use. So you can browse these trainings for yourself or you can download them and customize them if you want to put on a training and engagement workshop for your, for your group or for your employees or your colleagues. Uh, they are all free and available online. You know, we've got kind of a random smattering of trainings about talking to kids about engineering, uh, how to be effective volunteers, how to bring engineers into your classroom, and much more. And you can find those under the resources um, section on our website. We also, new this year, have all of our Girl Day promotional uh, materials in one place. And you can access this right on the Girl Day webpage. So you can download the ads for free, the logos. We have a free photo library that you can use when you're kind of putting together your advertising for your event. Or if you're putting together you know, trainings or workshops for Girl Day, you can use these photos as well. Uh, you can also download the poster, a uh, link to tons of free fun activities that you can do during your events and your outreach, and also a link to order the Girl Day planning kit. This year is introduced the Girl Day volunteer kit. can be purchased through our shop at discovere.org, or like I mentioned, you can link to it through the Girl Day page. The kit is free. It's just a $2 shipping charge, and it's got the poster, activities, a bookmark, some other great uh, resources to get you inspired and get you going. Um, and those are available now. Lastly, I did just want to point to our Discover E events calendar. This is a great way to get free advertising for your event. Uh, you can post your own events in here, let people know about your Girl Day events, Engineers Week events, or if you plan other events throughout the year, you can put it up here as well. And it might be as simple as just saying, hey, this is happening in our town, or this is happening, you can include a, a registration link, a website link, so if you're looking for more people to come and attend your event, you can put that information up there as well. And that way you can help to spread your word in the community. So with that, that brings our webinar to the question and answer session. Um, we've got about 20 minutes left. So if you have any questions, please type it into the question space in your control panel. And if it's for a specific person, whether it's directed at Dreamy or Samantha, if you want to learn more about them, please indicate that. Um, otherwise, we will open it up for questions for a few minutes. All right, this is Thea. I'm the official question reader, and we have a great question from Dave. As a guy, but someone who is a talent professional in an engineering world and as someone who is passionate about supporting this kind of outreach, is there a community that's a better fit for me, um, like the Role Model Facebook group? 
Thanks for your question, Dave. Um, that's a good question. We actually, this is a great community for you. Although this is, um, you know, our program is introduced to Girl to Engineering Day, we have a lot of role models who are men, and that is really valuable in helping to kind of show the diversity in engineering and to show that, you know, it's an inclusive space. Um, we encourage both men and women, engineers, non-engineers, to uh, join the Facebook group because it really adds to the discussion and helps to kind of foster the creativity and the expansive ideas that we have. Um, so although this is a program geared at engaging girls, uh, both male and female role models are really important in helping us share our messages. Hey, um, hey Gwen. Um, I just wanted to just uh, say one thing really quick, but in the early days of uh, my career right out of college, all of my role models were male role models. And so I wouldn't be, and even my father, who, who was probably the first one, so I wouldn't be here or, you know, um, where I am educationally or with experience if it wasn't for, for male role models. Great. Yeah, thank you for sharing. It's it's. Um, with this program, we get that question a lot about being, you know, kind of a male role model. And so thanks for, for sharing that it is important um, and that there is value in that. So, yeah, thank you. Our next question is, what is the name of the Girl Day face group, Facebook group? Um, so, Gwen, if you could go back to that uh, URL. And are the slides available for download? Yes, the slides will be posted uh, later today or tomorrow. And you will be getting an email from us with the, um, with the link to the slides. But they're on the resource section mm -hmm. of the website. Um, yeah. Does that have the URL? I don't see the so URL of it. If you just type in Girl Day Role Models, it should be the first thing that pops up. That's the name of the group. So our next question is from Rhonda. What's the best age to promote engineering? Uh, that's a great question. You know, it's we've shown that girls start to lose interest in engineering by the time they hit, you know, kind of fourth, fifth grade, middle school. Um, so it's never too early to start in, uh, engaging kids with engineering. And we've got a number of resources and trainings on the website that kind of gear towards age. It's also we have a lot of activities that you can actually filter um, the age range for those activities. So we've got activities for the young kids, for kind of the teenage kids, and then for adult, or excuse me, for high schoolers as well. Um, the, importance, the important thing is kind of being consistent with it so that once you've got their interest, you want to make sure that you keep fostering the interest. Um, so keep doing activities, talking to kids about engineering, um, engaging them in events, uh, whether it's you know films like Dream Big or engineering festivals that you might be putting on or that somebody else in your community might be putting on. Um, it's really kind of keeping that conversation started or keeping it going, looking at classes that they can take in school as they get older. So some high schools have engineering programs or STEM programs, and more and more a lot of these schools are starting to um, kind of incorporate this. So it's keeping that interest going um, from the young age. Um, but then, you know, that's not to say that if a girl has lost interest by eighth grade, it, that's not to say that it can't be re-engaged. Um, so it's really just finding a way, like Samantha was talking about earlier, is finding a way to relate to the student on a level that they can understand. So whether it's through, you know, making fake soda or making lip gloss and helping them to understand that these are, you know, engineering has a played a role in making these things possible. Um, that's a way that you can go back and get get the kids reengaged. Okay, so this next one, I'm combining two questions. One is, how do we find out if Dream Big is screening in our area? And another one is, has the Dream Big film been formatted for small green, 
small screen or non-IMAX. I live a long way from an IMAX screen, but I'm interested in planning a girls' night out event. Certainly. So you can visit our website, the discovery.org slash dream big. That's kind of the educational site for the film. And you can find out there's a on the the home page of that mini website, um, you can find there's a find a theater link so you can click on that and see if it's playing near you. And if it's not, contact me and I can talk to you about the steps of getting um, either organizing a special event screening if you wanted to work with a local theater. Um, it's been formatted for non-IMAX. Uh, there's also, if you wanted to do a girls' night out program for Girl Day, uh, we can the film can be provided as a Blu-ray or a DVD as well. All right. So then, um, do you have to be an engineer in order to be a role model? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, anybody can be a role model. You know, so if you are not an engineer, not in the engineering field, uh, you can still inspire a girl's future in any way. You know, just going out and talking to them, showing them the film, or downloading an activity off the website and doing it with them. These are all ways that even as a, a non-engineer, you can inspire a girl to take those, start taking those steps and sparking that interest um, and kind of fostering that. So. You do not need to be an engineer to be a role model. Would you suggest educators contact companies or professional societies to find engineers to come to schools in rural areas? Yeah, that's actually a, that's a good way to start. Um, if you are in an area and you don't have connections with your local engineering society or engineering companies, make a phone call. Do an internet search. Um, if you visit our website and download one of the planning guides, it'll give you some some ideas on where to start, who to start looking for. Discovery is made up of a coalition of engineering societies and organizations, and these are all listed under the About Us section on our webpage. Uh, these are good companies or societies to start with. You can type them in and see if you have a local chapter. Um, it's something that if you're not in the engineering field, it may not be obvious, but outreach and education are kind of built into the essence of a lot of these organizations, and they love to share, and they love to educate those new generations and just the local community about what's going on and how engineering impacts their everyday lives. So I would say do not hesitate to make those, you know, kind of cold calls, send emails. Um, it's a great way to get those conversations started. And if they aren't, if your local companies and organizations, the ones that you don't talk to, or the ones that you reach out to aren't able to come into your classrooms or engage your students, they might be able to refer you to somebody who does. This next question I'm going to answer, Gwen. It's, um, okay. do you know what classroom activities triggers or inspires girls to think about STEM careers? And Rachel, that's a fabulous question, and yes, we do. Um, activity, when you're looking at activities, look for activities that have a purpose, that you can connect to a broader um, societal, is, societal issue. Um, girls, a lot of times, they're not interested, if you're going to have them do a coding activity, um, just code to, to code. They want to know how this activity is going to um, fits into the larger context. So a lot of the activities on our website now, we've revamped all of the activities and the activities and download sections so that they do connect back to, um, uh, to a reason why they're doing it, um, uh, so that they really kind of see the difference that engineers can make. A lot of time girls think that, that uh, engineers are sitting in a, in a, in a uh, cubicle doing math problems all day. But if we can show them through the activities and the role models that they're making a difference, that they're making the world a better place like Dreamy and Samantha are, and you look for that with the activities, um, you'll go a long way to sparking that interest for them. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a great question from Tyler. How Actually, do you talk yeah, can oh. I just interject for one second? Sorry, just to go back about the, the question about 
um, finding engineers in rural areas. Samantha um, noted that uh, farmers are good role models for rural areas um, in regards to agricultural processes. And also, um, she reminded us that you know tech school teachers are great, and if you've got a local university that has an engineering department, these are good places to um, reach out to see for potential role models and, and speakers for engaging your students and, and uh, girls in local clubs as well. So. Awesome, awesome, yeah. Um, how do you talk with teachers and organizations and parents about organizing and introduce a girl to engineering day, but in a way that doesn't disclude the boys? How have you guys effectively communicated that? That's a great question. Um, with this program, we don't want to be, you know, kind of, we don't want to exclude the boys because certainly um, boys need good role models as well. And female, you know, female role models, just as much as male role models, can be excellent uh, role models to boys too. Um, however, we've seen and received feedback from groups that when you have groups of just girls engaged in these types of uh, science and STEM engineering programs, it gives them a sense of a, you know, a free space where they can ask questions, interact, and not feel um, overshadowed by boys. Not saying that this happens all the time, but this is just some of the feedback that we've received. Um, but I mean, I'd certainly say if you do a girls' night out event with Dream Big, you can do two events, you know, do one that's specifically for girls and then one that's for families or for, you know, the girls and their siblings and cousins and friends or, you know, a, a screening for your classroom so that you've got kind of the best of both worlds. You've got your girls-centered event, which is a kind of a space where they can interact with each other freely, um, but then also you can have the mixed events where you've got the boys and the girls working together to show that you know it's engineering is for for both boys and girls. It's not just for one or the other. Hey Gwen, this is Dreamy. I wanted to add something to that. And you you're hey. absolutely right that um, you know when we had workshops for uh, Lockheed Martin, we had um, some prize competitions, and you know we had some of the things like if you were to design astronauts' cabin, you know what kind of things would you consider? And um, you know we've had some great innovative ideas that come from uh, boys, and um, you know so I, I really think engineering it really is about working together, knowing how to work together as a team. Um, either a girl or a boy, you know. So um, e equally, they could make um, the same impact. Great, thanks. All right, I was answering a question, uh, typing in an answer to a question. Um, how do I find out if planning is already underway for girl for Girl Day in my community, San Diego? Uh, that's a great question. So you can start off by checking our events calendar, although I'll just say that not everybody posts their events, so just because it's not on the calendar doesn't mean something's not happening. Um, if you are a member of or in touch with uh, the local engineering societies, the San Diego, for example, has a lot of universities that might uh, plan their own separate events. So you can just start reaching out to them and seeing if they've got things planned if you want to get involved, ask if you can get involved, or if you're looking to find out how you can attend an event that's already um, in the works, you can go ahead and, you know, ask them how to, <laughs> how to attend. Um, so it would just kind of be, I'd suggest start with a Google search or an internet search. Um, it might be as simple as engineering, you know, girl day events or Engineers Week events in my area um, is a great way to get started. You can also post a question on the Facebook group. Join the Role Models Facebook group and see if anybody is from the San Diego area that might know of something that's in the works. That's what this group is designed to do, to kind of help share ideas, ask questions, and really network um, with role models across the country and internationally as we continue to grow. Let me 
Please, any other questions, Thea? Oh, yes, I was just reading one. I had myself on mute. Excuse me. <laughs> I work at the Rural Youth Development Agency, and this year we're focusing on STEM. I see that the film is showing February 2018 in my city. Would you suggest waiting until then and making a field trip or hosting a party before the end of the year? So I would suggest waiting um, to see the film when it opens up in your city. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, first off, part of the contractual obligations between the, the producers and the theaters that have leased the film, um, kind of, they, when they sign that lease agreement, they have the exclusive right to show the film in your city. Um, so that's one reason. But also, if it's you know an IMAX or a large screen or even in 3D, it really gives an awesome visual experience if you're able to take your students to the museum. Um, a lot of the museums are also creating programming to go with the film, so it adds that additional element of engagement for your kids. Now, I don't want to uh, say if you're planning a screening in an area where your museum is not playing the film, it's not going to be visually as cool, so, so don't get me wrong there. Um, but if you have the option to see it on the giant screen at a museum, I definitely take advantage of that. All right, and our last question is, State of Idaho is not represented in the list of theaters for Dream Big. How can we add Idaho to this list? Whom should we contact to make it happen? That's a great question. Um, you can contact me, and I can, you know, we can kind of talk through what the options are. It may be that the producers don't have any relationships with theaters near you, um, so that might be an option for you to uh, host a special event screening, a one-time screening, a girls' night out event, um, or if there's a museum theater that plays IMAX or giant screen films, we can certainly get them connected with the producers to see if there's an option there for, for a long-term lease. Um, but you know, if, if you've got a, a place in mind, send me an email and we can kind of go from there and, and see what our options are in Idaho or anywhere else. Great, that's the last of our questions. All right. Well, let me go to our end slide again so you have my email address um, and my phone number again. Thank you so much for attending our webinar. Um, at the end of this webinar, please take a minute to respond to our short survey. And uh, good luck and happy planning. If you have any questions about Girl Day or any of our resources, please send me an email, uh, give me a call, and I'd be happy to help. And again, just a thank you to Dreamy and Samantha for joining us and sharing their stories, and to everybody for attending. So, all right. And with that, I will be signing off. So good luck. <laughs>